Hello guys, I'm Nawal Yamul. Welcome to the series of Big Data. So in this series, we have starting with Spark. So till now we have seen what is difference between Hadoop and Spark. Now in this video, we are going to see about what is the architecture of Spark. If we talk about one of the popular language, it is Python. So Python is an open source so it is an open source and it is easy to use easy to use and it is open source and free and when it compared to other programming language python supports extensive libraries there are so many libraries where uh, like python has a support extensive libraries for example spark you can use spark with python you can use numpy you can use pandas you can use web development applications there are so many things you can do with python so to take our course further we are taking python with spark python with spark so we call it as a PySpark. so spark supports all high level apis like it supports java also it supports Scala also and it supports R also, R programming language. But we are going to refer mainly Python. So if you are expert in any of the programming language, you can choose that with Spark. But we are taking Python with Spark and so that's why we are taking our course further with PySpark. So we are going to deep dive into architecture of the spark very important and i'm explaining you in a very very simple language okay so this is a basic architecture of the spark so we can see that there are three major or core components of spark if you compare with the architecture of hadoop there we had a, a like map reduce for processing here we have a spark here we have a spark then we have an hdfs for storage here also we have a storage and then we have a yarn that is a cluster manager here we have a cluster manager so in hadoop we call it as a master computer and slave nodes but in spark we call it as a driver program and then we call it as a worker node so now let us focus only on spark so here there is one driver node or you can call one driver program you can see one driver program and you have n number of worker nodes so why i'm calling this n it depends on depends upon the workload depends upon your data depending upon that you can choose your worker node now in this image i can see that there are only two worker nodes worker node 1 worker node 2 depending upon the application depending upon the data you can choose your worker nodes so you can take two worker nodes three worker nodes one worker nodes and so on and in that each worker node we have a executor so this executor in turn have a course inside that so we are talking about course 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 are nothing but now if you talk about one worker node so this will have all the resources that we were talking about in the previous videos for example uh, this worker node will have some storage this worker node will definitely have a ram and it will have a compute also so you can choose according to your workload according to your application according to your data you can choose what would be the storage for this worker node what would be the ram for this worker node and what will be the compute engine for this worker node and how many cores do you want in each worker node so you can choose according to that and these are all virtual this is virtual we are not setting up a physical computer in total so this is all virtual so what happens 
suppose now here is your user and he have a huge file suppose let us take an example like he is dealing with a file which has 1 lakh rows okay 1 lakh rows or you can call uh, 0.1 million rows now what does driver program do so i'm giving you a broad understanding then we'll go in deeper of sparks architecture so what does the driver program do driver program basically partition this data so it will start partitioning actually driver program do not partition there is one component inside this driver program called as rdd we will talk about that play in a later video so it will partition partition the data just a minute so you have a huge amount of data like this and suppose 1 million rows are there so we are talking about big data okay big data so obviously the data will be like so huge so it will partition the data and it will distribute the data <laughs> distribute okay so these worker nodes sorry we have worker node 1 we have worker node 2 so we are going to choose among what storage should have in this worker node and what uh, ram should have and how many cores we need in this executor and so on depending upon the workload depending upon the workload like the workload is depending upon the data so now i have a huge file so i can take two executors or two worker nodes in that i will take two cores so first core second core first core second core and so on so this driver program starts partitioning your data so it will split your data it will split your data so just like we have discussed in a distributed system so this whole single file cannot sit or you cannot store this file in this driver program because this is a huge number of file on suppose this is a real time uh, data where your data keeps on adding keeps on adding keeps on adding you may get a data again in future so you cannot store this whole file in one one machine so for that we need to partition the data and whatever the data is partitioned it will going to distribute so this driver program going to distribute that data to worker nodes suppose first few rows are distributed to worker node second few rows are distributed to worker node 2 okay so this is worker node 2 so here worker node 2 what worker node 2 do so whatever these partitions or whatever partition data is there that will store into different cores so here and here similarly this worker node also starts storing that data into worker node so now we can see that all your data now is partitioned and then distributed across different workers worker nodes and that across different cores now your data is sitting somewhere here somewhere here somewhere here somewhere here and so on now the user here you have user he has submitted this spark application i mean they have given this workload or this data and driver program splits that data partition that data and distributes to the different worker nodes now user says that okay i want to count okay this is my first transformation i want to count how many rows are there for example i am using a count operation so now what does these worker nodes do now worker node starts counting the rows so it will count how many rows are there how many rows are there and so on it will count how many rows are there and it will return you it will give you a feedback but this worker node will give you a feedback like there are suppose 0.5 million rows and this will also return a result like there are suppose 0.6 million rows so now what does the driver program do driver program sums up all this okay 0.5 and 0.6 so it is around so it will say user that there is 1.1 million rows 
so this is all done in fraction of seconds now you might be wondering like what what does this cluster manager do so you will be uh, like thinking on what does this cluster manager do so uh, to explain you the basic architecture of spark let me go to the one of the analogy analogy uh, so that analogy will be explained in the next video so guys if you like the video please hit the subscribe button share it with your friends and please continue watching this series of spark or big data thank you again